Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. And it seems that he's very, very sleepy. Silver, wake up. Please give a show, man. I say the right about the apple that they are. Norman, you woke us up too early. Shame on you. Go to the corner. But... Yeah. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Songs. Well, it's... Girl, yeah, I'm sleepy. Well, yeah. It seems that it's their day off. And today we'll be reviewing Season 6, Episode 10, Applejack's Day Off. Original air date on May 28, 2016. Written by Michael P. Fox and Will Fox. So, uh, brother... Uh, I'm assuming brother combo, that's cool. And are you guys ready? Uh, are, are you guys um, off your breaks or something like that? No, screw lot, you. Gonna need a lot more Java for this. <laughs> like all the Javas. Ah. Okay. Well, Fine, I will... I'll wake up and do this crap for you, Norman, because I like you. <laughs> I will buy a Starbucks and drink, drink all the coffee therein as soon as oh, I actually have the money to me? buy a Starbucks. <laughs> I'll give you 20 bucks if you can me back a green tea something. This is Starbucks, child. You're going to get a tea bag for 20 bucks. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> a tea bag. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. If you want tea bag, you can go play Halo. <laughs> no, thanks. But anyway, um, in today's episode, Rarity wants to hang out with Applejack and make her go to the day spa. And apparently, Bill Jack is too high strung with her work ethics that she doesn't know how to take a break. And Rarity asks Twilight if she can help her out with the chores for the day. And hijinks ensue. Hijinks! Indeed. Before we start, we need to go with first impressions. And Seppi, what's your first impression about this episode? It was boring. It should feel bad for being boring, except not really. It was just boring. Really? No. Yeah. Any reason for it being boring? I don't know. It was just boring. There was nothing really interesting about the episode that made me, like, want to go back and rewatch it again. Or at least that's my take on it. Like, it was boring... I had to slightly remember what it was before we came on the show. Alright, yeah. And Silver, what about you, man? Well, I appreciate the, the lesson it's trying to teach. The idea that, you know, we tend to do what works in the moment. And that is sometimes it's not the most effective overall. But we keep doing it because it's hard to take a step back. However, there's a very extended middle section that is not all that enticing. I like Applejack and Rarity as the as the ultimate odd couple. Have ever since, uh, oh, the Slumber Party episode. Um, look before you sleep? Yes. And unfortunately, it, their dynamic wasn't in play because really Applejack was more ignoring uh, Rarity than she was interacting with her. So it feels like we spend an unnecessary amount of time at the spa watching them just sort of think about only to have a very bizarre lesson at the end where Applejack is made to be very unrealistic. Hmm, all right. And as for me, well, this episode's lesson is kind of an eye-opener. We laugh at the moment and we laugh at Applejack because, oh, Applejack's so silly. But when we sit down and really think about it, are we doing the same thing too? And yeah, um, it's good to be reminded of this because since we people are a creature of habit, so we tend to do the same thing over and over again because, well, we're used to it. It feels normal. And even the slightest change will make us go into a frenzy. For me personally, the lesson here is pretty good. It kind of opened my eye on certain things in my uh, personal workspace. But that's besides the point. And yes, the middle part there could have been dealt well. But anyway, um, first impressions aside, I think we can hop into the reviews fully. Spoilers will be ahead, so if you haven't watched the episode, pause it here, watch it first, and then come back. 
if you've done that, welcome back and let's start. So we start off the episode with Rarity being in the day spa. And yes, she's been in there for a while now waiting for Applejack. And I have a feeling that three hours later, Applejack comes in saying that she just finished her chores. And unfortunately for Applejack, the spa is closed. And we get a very freakishly looking rarity. She looks like the sands of time have washed upon her for a thousand years. <laughs> Granny Smith doesn't look this bad. That legitimately scared me the first time I saw that. Oh, God. It's like, no, Rarity! Are you going to be like that forever? Well, just expect Grace Smith to come in and, hey, you want to be mowing mare on some dating clubbing? <laughs> I could use someone to make me look good. <laughs> oh, God, no. <coughs> uh, no, but still. Uh, with that freakishly moment out of the way. <sighs> what I'm assuming here is probably a week later. They, didn't, they don't really state how time of passage goes through here, but I'm assuming it's a week later. So, probably a week later, we see Twilight and Spike and Rarity going to Sweet Apple Acres. And Twilight is getting more pies for Spike. I wonder why. And Rarity trying to drag Applejack out of her home and to the day spa for um, some tat 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 But my, I have a question. Why do you assume a week later? I'm just assuming because Rarity's busy, Applejack's busy, so finding the right time to hang out, probably, one of those situations. I have no idea. I have no real way to estimate. Ponies are so strange in their timing. They do big events the day of. They set up for big events the day of. They Don't they say, like, it, like, takes them, like, 30 moons or something like that? Or it's been moons? It's been moons. But that could be an exaggeration. It's like... Hello, Silva, I haven't talked to you in a while. It's been years while we have actually been talking for a few hours. So, yeah, it could be, could, could be that. Actually, it's, by moons, they mean they've been staring at one another's twitches, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Just give me the shippers more fuel for the fodder. Oh, oh God. There's a video of you saying, oh, look at my tush. Oh, God, no. Uh, say, look at my tush, look at my tush, <laughs> look. Look, 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 look. Oh god, no. Torterra, that's a shout out to you, man. <laughs> but still. Mm. Hey, Torterra, thanks for the deed. Hehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now gaze upon shout the shout dark out. side of my moon. <laughs> oh no, no. But anyway, um, with them heading to Sweet Apple Acres, we get to see Applejack baking pies. Spike gets a new supply of pies and that it's just a very ineffective way to stack pies. You just put one pan on top of another pie, and so on. You're going to get concave pies. Yeah, that's not right, but this is cartoon logic, so I'll give it a pass. You're going to end up with apple cobbler at this rate. <laughs> but still, um, with that, we get to see Rarity asking if she's on the menu. You say she, she wants Applejack to... Om nom nom her. Uh, I ain't saying anything. Or roast her marshmallow. Uh, I ain't saying anything much beyond that point. So, uh, it seems that Applejack is really busy with the chores. And Rarity suggests that if the other family members could take the chores. But, nah, everyone else is really busy with their own chores. And Rarity has a bright idea of asking Twilight if she could do it. So, seems like a good idea. What could go wrong, right? That's why it's all like, I hate not having you two give, have the chance to do shipping fuel. I'll work here while you inspire the fanfic writers. A lot of people do like this because it gives them shipping fuel for this cup. So we leave Twilight and Spike to the chores. And um, the good thing about this one is Applejack gave Twilight a list of how to feed the pigs. Or is it the list of chores that she needs to do? I didn't really remember. The list of chores. The list of chores, but with step-by-step -step instructions because it's Twilight. You know she appreciates the list. Respect the yes. list. Respect it. But meanwhile, we go to the Ponyville Day Spa where their staff has quadrupled. And we get oh to boy. see the most unlikely of attendees, Rainbow Dash. Oh boy. I'm waiting for Ponyville Confidential with like a... That was when we first saw that. Oh my. I think Rainbow Dash like started like doing this in secret since then? I don't know. Question is, how long has she been doing it? Uh, she's a regular by now, so she's been doing this ever since, I guess. But, uh, yeah, she got over people touching her hooves. 
Maybe she just needed to meet the right masseuse. Probably. Uh, 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 the one with the magic touch. Which, given that they've introduced at least, what, three more employees to this place? I just find that fascinating. It used to be Aloe and Vera were uh, Aloe and Lotus Blossom. And then now we've got this r- Russian accented pony and a, du- a unicorn. And I guess Bulk is full-time staff now. Was Bulk always part-time? All I knew was that he was deep tissue massage. Poor Mr. Cake. Oh. <laughs> and Mr. Cake squeaks. <laughs> well, running a business and raising two twins is demanding on any soul. Yeah, it's true that. Uh, but still, I do enjoy this because we get to see the show trying to... Well, they made a funny, and I like this funny, showing that Rainbow Dash has that feminine side that she kind of has but doesn't really want to show... Anywho, Rainbow very subtly, sneakily makes her way out. Seriously, she missed her calling in the spy industry. D- Agent Double O Dash. And we then find out that the spa is actually just like BronyCon. It's full of lines. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, really. And hopefully none of them are winged to uh catch a gold bat on your face, right, Silver? Uh, on my face. Yeah. But yeah, I- Okay, I joke, but BronyCon did an excellent job of uh, organization. But yes, Pokemon Go decided to plant a gold bat on my face. <laughs> I, I had like five people taking photos. Like, it's like, oh, hey, Ego Rising. They show me the screenshot of a gold bat on my face. Ego crushed. But here's where the episode starts to sort of lose its audience and sends me into nappy time. Rarity's sole role from this point forward is to whine about losing time. And that rhymes, which is sublime. Feel free if you want to chime. Oh my, it seems that um, rhyming... Uh, I'm terrible at rhyming. Why Why am I even trying? Then don't. You didn't hear that I was rhyming? Oh. That was that was quite rhyming. <laughs> I did. Um, I don't care. Move on. <laughs> because our focus is now upon the pony that is quite orange. Oh yeah. Um, oh, sh- oh shoot. Caramel, was it? His name? <laughs> Seriously? I don't know. I'm just trying to remember from season one. Applejack! Applejack is orange. Oh, no. Oh, I'm talking... Oh, I, <laughs> mm, I was wondering <laughs> about the rarity... Yeah, no. no. Yeah, ra- rarity is not orange. Rarity is light is whitish gray. Ra- Nor- I'm worried about your eyes, Norman. Well, at least now we know who the real silly ponies are. Uh, well, back on track. Um, there's a huge line... There's a huge line, and oh look, Tommy Tiara's mom makes an appearance. Oh, how I have waited for this day. I miss her ever so much since Crusaders of the Lost Mark. I don't know if I can get more sarcastic, <laughs> but I'll try. Oh, well. But still, <laughs> we do see why there's a huge line, and apparently the steam room has no steam. It has run out of steam. Maybe they need to fix the valve. Get the pyro in on that. <laughs> Maybe somebody needs to get the guy who is responsible for this. Gabe, something? Actually, it is kind of funny that they don't... Does Ponyville have a plumber? I think they have. They should have. But we've not seen a plumber pony. Not to my knowledge. Not yet, but they should. Because we have plumbing, so logically they should have a plumber pony. Well, anyway, we, we wander, we follow Applejack and her mystery, and we do see poor Mr. Cake. Yeah. Yes. Deep tissue massage of that weight on a concentrated point. That is that is spinal trauma waiting to happen. Well, at least we know sort of what happened to Spike. <laughs> but no, technically, um, I have to point this out because if not, commenters will. Um, Bulk Bicep is not putting his full weight on Mr. Cake because if you notice his front hooves, they're holding on to something. So he's, well, not putting... Much pressure on Mr. Kick. For comedic effect, it is funny. I see his hooves extending above the door frame. What they're doing up there, he could have a pair of cymbals. He's just <laughs> waiting to clash together to, to sing till the end of the session. <laughs> or he may be holding up the roof. <laughs> Why are you up in here? Uh, but still, I, I, I stated that out. If, if you don't want to listen to it, it's cool. I, I like your explanation better. But still, mm, we get to see the explanation of why things are kind of messed up. And apparently, 
um, they're using a lot of water to wash the towels. Apparently, the spa goers, while waiting for, well, the steam room, are given free hot towels. And that sparks a chain reaction of, oh wow, how do I do this? Like, mm. Eat the hot the steam water. is going out, ponies are getting cold, the hot towels are getting made, which uses up more steam, and therefore it's busted. Yeah. What she said. It's tool time. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the weird thing. Rarity, who was so gung-ho for a mystery back in Re- Rarity Investigates, is now so bored with this mystery. She wants her spa time and that's it. Well, it seems that Rarity has this one track mind of I want to do if I if I set my mind on something I want to do do it, and her mind is set on relaxing. Like I want to relax with Applejack. Like if we can't use the steam room, that's okay. There's other things going on in the day spa, so it's all good. But Applejack is pig-headed and really wants the steam room first, so I can't blame Rarity on this. I understand, like, both sides, like, uh, it's Applejack. He can't, she can't help but work. But at the same time, it's sort of, like, abandoning Rarity. Like, she finally gets Applejack out of her state. And just because he can't get your steam, you won't even relax. It's a bit unfair, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. I'm sort of still not awake. This is a matter of compromise, and Applejack doesn't want to compromise, while Rarity here is willing to compromise to do anything else. And honestly, she is also not compromising by not letting Applejack have her way till the end where Applejack becomes tool time and fixes the day spar. And you know what? Rarity just gives up. And you know what? I, I... I came here to be pampered, so yeah, I'm going to get pampered. Yeah, pretty much. Bring forth the pampering. They probably paid some money ahead of time or whatever, I don't know. It doesn't normally work like that, but I'd believe it in this case. So I guess Rarity's sort of trying to get her money's worth. She's trying to get her happy ending. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not that kind of happy ending, I hope. I'm talking about the happy end of the episode. I'm not sure what you're envisioning, you perverted young lady. I can't believe you inflict that on our young viewers. How could you? I didn't say anything. You're the one who inflicted it on. You're the one who implied it. So shush. Shush you. I talked about the ending of the episode. You spun it grossly out of context, you horrible, horrible person. (laughs) Uh, You're horrible. I hate you. I'm sorry, I love you. Please don't hate me. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I am not responsible for what they say. But it, Mr. But anyway. Norman, your host. You're responsible for everything. <laughs> no, not really. But anyway, wing and hours up, Applejack needs to head back to the farm. But Rarity just says, why not we just check up on Twilight? I'm sure she is able to do all of the chores. She's a princess. How hard can farm work be? Okay, I, let's just... Analyze that sense for a minute. What part of princesshood makes you automatically qualified to run a farm? None. But the power she has, probably. The power she has. Even when she was a unicorn, she could probably handle it. Yeah, she has been proven to, well, kind of dealt with most of the farm work with her magics. Well, it's feeding the pigs. The problem is that Applejack does this long, complicated list thing to where she can't even get that done. Anyway, Applejack comes back to a very, well, pigs are still hungry, so Applejack's not happy. And Applejack explains about the spa, and well, while doing all of this, she's kind of giving a lesson that she should take to heart. And yeah, um, the way she's feeding the pigs, like, isn't it much easier just putting the gruel in the pen and, you know, just be done with it? Here's the thing. The spa wasn't terribly involving. It did show Applejack at her best, helping her neighbors, being just willing to chip in, dive, work through it, and not give up. It was simultaneously her stubbornness was working against her relaxation, but it was saving the spa, who could not hire hire a plumber because there is none in Ponyville. 
Are you sure? Because the last time I saw in the comics, there was Mario, Luigi, and Mario, Mario. And they were all in the Crystal Empire, which was so boring, uh, it couldn't have, it had to import characters. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah, I remember that now. And so lazy, they had to export a resistance. <laughs> Uh, but okay, Silver. I know you hate the Crystal Empire, but can we move on back to Ponyville, please? No, I'm bitter, and I want to ride this train. All aboard the bitterness change. Whoop, whoop. See what you caused, Norman. What? You but, you had to bring up those guys. Now he's all on his Crystal Hate train. Oh, believe me, Will. You get to the Mario Brothers movie, which you probably haven't even seen. You whippersnapper. Trust me, I've. Sadly, seen parts of it, I never wanted to finish it. So, you've seen parts of the Mario Brothers movie, but getting you to see Indiana Jones... It's gotten... It's been on TV a couple of times. I've seen parts of it, it's like, nope, nope, nope. It's a good bet movie. I don't plan on finishing it. Well, actually, I I did see the ending, it was... That's not a word! Anyways. But here's, here's the thing. To say that Applejack is facing the same problem at home, they basically take dial her absurdity up to 10. And the thing about Applejack is she's the even keel of the main six. She's the one who's the most balanced, who usually is an anchor for the rest of the group. When you try to make her crazy, it starts to feel very forced. It, there, it, there's a certain insincerity about it. I'm and that's why this involves family. Even then. No, even in Some Point to Watch Over Me. I just start, I start to think, okay, no, you, you, you're overselling it. By the second helmet, I, I knew they were going too far. Yeah. True. And then the double helmets. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, when it comes to how stubborn Applejack is, you know, it, I can see it. But yes, I do see your point of them trying to force this on her. Like she's need, she needs to be playing it up more and like they need to put a quirk on her. It makes sense that, you know, Applejack would be doing some extra steps that just slow her down. But you don't have to have her doing the chicken dance. They showed a teaser of that scene before the episode came out. And I figured, wow, there, Applejack really is going loopy. But we, we get to a montage. You need a montage. 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 Even Rocky had a montage. <laughs> montage. Ah, I know what that's from. Thanks, Steve Rogers. <laughs> Wait, what? You're Captain America. I got that reference. <laughs> the sad, <laughs> the sad part is that might be slightly true because my last name is Rogers. <laughs> I'm not uh, even kidding. Oh, wow. your name is Sapphire Heart Song Rogers. Okay, <laughs> I can dig no, it. No, like Earl. Everyone in the comments, please say hi to Sapphire Heartsong Rogers. No! <laughs> that, is, that is her name online now. Let the branding begin. Yes. Oh, God. But anyway, uh, montage, we get to see how Applejack feeds chickens and get eggs. Uh, Twilight, Rarity, and Spike says, nah, this is a bad plan, y'all. Here's a much faster way to do things. Yeah, that's, that was a shell of a job. <laughs> yep, yep. And the way she water her crops. Uh, she has patience. And Twilight says, nah, this is how you should do it. This is how you should make Twilight wet. <laughs> yes, she is wet in this scene. So is Spike. And fixing the fence. There's a hole, and Applejack's way of fixing said hole is to patch it up. Rarity says, nah, just change the whole thing. It's much faster. Just build, build a bigger wall before Donald Trump pony shows up. <laughs> oh god, no. And at the end of the day, um, Applejack learns her lesson and yeah, everything is being sped up by 20%. So yay. Would you say it's 20% cooler? Yeah, yeah. Because we still have one more Rainbow Dash cameo. Yeah, yeah. So in the epilogue, uh, with more time to spend, Applejack and Rarity can spend those time at the spa. And yeah, it seems that Rainbow Dash came back to get her Hufu cure and back massage. And I didn't hear you guys mention this, but she's wearing her, um, whatchamacallit? Tank that? like slippers? Yeah, tank like slippers and, um, bath towel. I like that. It's so cute. They're reusing assets, but still pretty good. 
Yeah, it is slightly uh, adorable. A, a bathrobe. No bathrobe. Yeah. So that says a lot. Yeah. So in the end, uh, Rainbow Dash joins in the funds, uh, and with that episode ends. So a random encounter as they all enter a steamy room together. You know, most fanfics begin this way. Oh uh, yeah, I've read a few. I don't read fanfics. You people make them sound scary. <laughs> Only if we want to scare you. Which we do. Yes, indeed. So anyway, pretty okay episode. Nothing to jump up and down over, but still, um, it's okay. I think we should hit to final thoughts and Seppi. I still don't like this episode. Silver made it worse by going up all on this in a direction I did not want to go down. Oh, you went. Oh, you, so you wanted to <laughs> go down on that direction. I, I don't know. I'm tired. I never really liked this episode that much. Not for any particular reason as other than, you know, it bored me. It does have its cute little moments, but other than that, I found it pretty forgettable. All right. And Silver? Ah, uh, what can be said that has not already been said. There's a good lesson in there. There's some interesting character moments, but not a lot of character interaction. And as such, it just sort of feels like this exists, but there's a very big lull. And meanwhile, you know, the, the Monty Python crew is off to the side getting going, get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Get on yes, with get it. Yes, get on with it. <laughs> and they're all still chilling at the spa, be like, hmm, where can we get these, uh, where can we get this steam? Get on with it! <laughs> so, uh, all in all, there's, I can't say it's bad, but I really can say it's uninteresting. Would the proper phrase be meh? I believe there's a general sense of meh involved, which is unfortunate. Uh, poor Applejack, her stories, I think the, the last Applejack episode before this one was uh, the main attraction, which is her best. Poor AJ just doesn't have the chance to bounce back, it seems. They don't know how to utilize her on her own. She's got to be with other ponies to really shine. And as for me, I, I, I'm I, okay with this episode. I, It's hard for me to say I like it, but I do like the lesson. The lesson is relatable for me because I have habits, like very bad habits. And looking at them... Okay, I should stop certain things to progress my work faster. But since it's a habit, it's hard for me to kick it. Looking at this episode, there were funny moments, but those moments were far and few. In the end, it's just an okay episode. It has that lull in the middle. And that part with the whole piping investigation, it wasn't enough to fully grab my attention. It was okay, but it was not the best moment. Would would you say it left you steamed? Oh, yes. But still, it could have been better. The potential to for this episode to be better was there, but yeah, we didn't get it. So, oh well. But the lesson was okay. Funny moments were there. Oh, oh well. Can't say much about it then. So anyway, next week, next week we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic issue 40, um, written by Ted Anderson and art by Brenda Hickey. And this one, whew, this one is a hard one to explain. Um, this story is... Twilight becomes a teenage mom in school. Yeah, that's one way to put it. <laughs> but anyway, that's our problem for next week. As for now, we can leave you with a thought of this episode. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil McQueel. And I am Sophia Hopsound. Rogers. <laughs> yes, that is also true. Screw you. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode review. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. The innuendo on this episode is so strong. Would you Should say I pull up the music again? No. Would you say it's strong <laughs> and, and pulsing? <laughs> no. We, we, we went for a long time and thrust into the story. Uh...